Hey guys, so today I will be- whoa, this is way too big. I will be breaking down how I made my Obito's Rage. Anyway, so this is the, the environment I used, um, it's just trees and then some grass. It's really simple for just a 3D land. I didn't need much, because- so there's these four particle systems that I use. One's a tree, one's actually named, and then there's this grass field that I have. I separated them, so the grass was clipping weird, so I just put the grass on a separate layer. So I put giant trees in one, which was very scarce, and then medium smaller trees, and then they were like a ton of them. So even smaller trees for the bottom, and then medium sized trees just to fill in everything else. So I made this, and it, it looks really scattered, but this is really how trees are. <laughs> They kind of just grow all over each other. <laughs> so basically, if you want to make a particle system, all you really do is um, just kind of click over here, and then you get some hair. But it's going to start out as emitter, and then you click hair. You get a white paint. And then you have all your... You have all the... The red is the like the highest density, blue is like no density. So that's where I put all my grass at. And then if you look up here, if you just hide that, I use the same exact group. For the, for the grass, so if you look here, grass is there. So, see, it like fades out nice. Um, anyway, I rendered that, and I and I, I got to this part, and this is where I kind of started compositing, obviously, because I rendered out everything. There wasn't too many layers to go through. There was only like two for this one. The max I had was like four, probably. <laughs> so it's not bad. So I had one, two, I actually had three. This was, uh, I lied. I had three for this one. So I had um, the roots. I, I just was still ahead of me because I didn't really need me to do much. I just need that little reflection. That actually didn't show in the final one. It was kind of sad. Um, roots. And the roots is a pain in the butt to make because you have to like make it all like go around, around town. And then it zooms in. But once I got that, I like the final look that I got. It looks cool. Anyway, so f I started with this natural fog vignette, that kind of, and then I put a little curves on it because it was way too light. Wait. So then a color grade. I I'm not sure this is a color grade. This is a curves color grade. Kind of makes everything pop. And then there's the eye. Move it up a little bit. There's the eye. Extra glow for the eye. Another extra glow for the eye. Very surprising. More glow. And then this is just the final curves. I always like putting a final curves over everything once everything's together and overlaid. So it can make things just sit together. So, because it just, I don't know, it darkens a little bit, but it makes it look better. Anyway, I did embers just to make it look a little bit more extreme. And then chromatic aberration. It's a really easy effect if you have the money. <laughs> I put a final glow in the eye just to, just to really sell it because it goes from really dark and crystally to really light and I just I don't know I wanted that effect yeah and this is the final thing next scene scene where like the explosion and all that stuff happens we start with the CG layer add some fog just give it a little bit more uh, oomph and then for this displacement there's an effect called chromatic displacement also by Red Giant and it really helps with the um, the just selling the, the energy effect up here we'll get to that but basically you just set it down and then you open up the panel and then you could set it to which layer you want displaced or you, which layer you want to be the ma map to displace it and then you just click source or masks or effects and then it'll do it for you so and then there's me I didn't really have to do much with me but and then there's some embers this ember is just a little explosion just to sell the effect more I should probably add some displacement on that too that'd be nice um, and then there's the actual full frame members. This is the same one I used in the first scene. I just scaled it up a little bit, or down technically. And then there's the there's the color grade, the main color grade, some glow. And then there's the energy effects. I just added oh I just added some glows and curves just to make it a little look a little bit more like you know match the scene. And then we have the final two color grades, which is chromatic displacement. That's a just a general displacement then a curves effect like I usually do, just to kind of fit everything in. So that's how I made that, just to go a little bit more in depth. So this this is kind of a pain in the butt to do, because I had to, I'd like, I had to render this layer like three times, and then I'd like overlay more effects on it, because it just, and it still barely matches, you can kind of see. But I had this, that didn't match obviously, so I added another layer, and, and which was like that, and then I just combined the two, 
and it was really annoying. But I used a software called Absinthe. I go into Photoshop, you go into Photoshop, and you edit your photo, and then you just kind of overlay it and then into a keyframe, and then to a video, you, you, you convert it into a PNG sequence, and then it outputs, and it's really cool. Um, it sticks what you edited onto the video using like AI or like not really AI I wouldn't say it just kind of sticks it on kind of hopes for the best, but it's good technology, but yeah <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, Yeah, so and then the background it, that was that was just CG, you know, and then embers whatever some fog we were done So Yeah, that's all I got